Well, hi there. My name is Clint Laidlaw. I double majored in zoology and biological science. I have a master's degree and a PhD in biology. And we recently decorated Clint's reptile room for Halloween. A couple of the decorations were so horrifyingly inaccurate that I felt that I needed to put up signs to apologize to our guests for their complete lack of anatomical correctness. They were horrible. This is supposed to be a place of learning. I mean, if you're gonna make a bird skeleton, why wouldn't you at some point look at a picture of an actual bird skeleton for reference? But then I got to thinking, perhaps there's something to learn from these horrendous skeletons. So I went out to some Halloween stores looking for any animal skeleton Halloween decorations that I could find. I'm not gonna fixate on minor details. These aren't meant to be museum replicas or teaching aids. I'm not gonna be counting cervical vertebrae or anything like that. I'm only gonna focus on the stuff that is so glaring that it cannot be overlooked. Stuff that even a cursory Google search would have revealed and that went unrevealed nonetheless until today. First up is this horrible spider. Oh gosh, it, it's just the worst. But it does have some redeeming features. For one thing, it includes the pedipalps. I, I often have students in my classes draw spiders as they remember them. And very rarely do they put on these little feeding uh, assistance appendages called pedipalps. So I was kind of impressed that it had those. It also has chelicerae, which are modified into fangs in spiders. They're probably gonna get those. It does have the right number of legs, which I find not all students get that spiders have eight legs, though most do. And they're in almost the right location. Not quite. I find when students draw them, the majority of them will put the eight legs coming off of the back segment. So there are two body segments, and that's one thing they got right. Usually, when students draw the eight legs, they draw them coming off of the back segment, the abdomen, instead of the front segment, the cephalothorax. However, the legs actually come off of the front segment, the cephalothorax. And, and if, if you draw like a cartoon spider, again, most people draw the legs coming off of the back segment. If you just move them to the front segment, all of a sudden, that spider starts to look right. But that's not the way most people have it in their brains. So they almost got that one right on this one. Some redeeming features, but it has one ginormous flaw. It isn't that it only has two eyes. Spiders are not vertebrates, and they do not have endoskeletons. A spider's skeleton looks like a spider. This is a good model of a spider skeleton. It even has its legs in the right location. But this thing, this looks like you made a spider out of a pile of rabbit bones. Speaking of mammals, let's take a look at this cat. At first glance, it looks pretty good. The shape and the pose are fairly realistic. It has a lot of the right bones just, you know, going around the whole cat. It has heterodont dentition, which means it's got multiple different tooth types. Mammals tend to have this heterodont dentition, whereas animals like reptiles tend to have what is called homodont dentition, where all their teeth are essentially the same. And it's got pretty good synapsid skull. You know, they've, they've, they've done some work here to put one single hole in the skull. So it definitely has some, some very correct features to it, but it has some real flaws. It's got ears on its skull. It's got skull ears, bone ears. Um, nope. Okay, so the, the, the structure of ears is generally cartilage, which is not bone and uh, it's not going to be part of the skeleton in this way. I will mention though, ears like this are something, big fleshy ears, are something that you only find in the mammals. If you look at things like like reptiles, amphibians, uh, birds, which are technically reptiles, but uh, you know, their own special lineage with feathers and such, they do not have big fleshy external ears. And I think a lot of the reason that they leave these ears on here because it wasn't just this cat skeleton. I, you know, I saw all kinds of dog skeletons. Every cat skeleton I saw had bone ears on it. And I think the thing is, when you see a mammal without fleshy ears, 
it becomes a lot less recognizable as what it is. This disappears and all of a sudden, probably a large percentage of the population would have no idea that's a cat. If you show people a real cat skeleton, they usually don't have a clue what it is. Other issues, uh, it doesn't have a sternum, so all of its ribs are unconnected. They just, they're just free-floating ribs, all of them. It also has no lumbar vertebrae. Uh, there should be, I mean, there are ribs at the front that protect a lot of the vital organs, but back here, these vertebrae shouldn't have any ribs at all, but the ribs just keep on going all the way to the pelvis on this guy. It also is plantigrade, which is actually the way that we walk with our entire foot on the ground. Cats, though, they walk up on their toes. It's called digitigrade. And, and so this cat's whole foot shouldn't be flat on the ground. It should be up just on, the, on its tippy toes, like, like horses and even elephants, actually. Cats are digitigrade, not plantigrade. This cat is plantigrade. It's bad, but this is not the worst cat I found today. I will show that one to you in a bit. It's worth the wait. Really, if it weren't for those ears, I could almost show this one off in the reptile room, but it's a disgrace. So let's take a look at a mammal skeleton that doesn't have ears. This bat doesn't have any ears. It also seems to have made some effort at showing off the synapsid condition, which is pretty good. It has lumbar vertebrae that are without ribs. It also has a sternum connecting the ribs. The wings are really pretty darn good. In fact, I learned something from observing this skeleton that I hadn't really noticed before, which is that bats, so bats' wings are composed of their hand. And essentially, they've got really elongated fingers that are webbed together that form most of the wing. And they've got a free thumb, which I'll talk about here in a minute. I hadn't really noticed until this skeleton that the index finger of bats is considerably shorter than the other fingers. But as I was looking at, at real bat skeletons, uh, kind of checking that, I noticed that, that that is something that seems to be true of bats, so I learned something from this skeleton. I said the wings are pretty good, and, and I just want to take a moment to compare the structure of bat wings to other flighted vertebrates. So bats, like I said, they've got like a whole hand out in their wing. That's different from the pterosaurs, like pterodactyl and pteranodon, that these were flighted ancient reptiles related to dinosaurs but not dinosaurs. And, and these guys, they had three fingers usually protruding out of the top of the wing. So they had three free fingers with claws and then just a stupendously long pinky finger that made up basically the whole wing. In fact, the word pterodactyl means wing finger. And so they had these giant, just one giant pinky finger that made up the wing. My son a while back, he got a set of, of dinosaurs and other ancient reptiles. And it came with some pteranodons, which are pterosaurs. And they had three fingers coming out of the top, but then all sorts of bat wing bones coming down. It was unacceptable, we had to get rid of them. Birds, on the other hand, have a completely different wing altogether. So they've got a lot of actually reduction in the number of hand bones and then a ton of fusion. So their wing is basically just one straight bone, you know, that bends at the same locations as your arm, but their hand is just one big, fused piece. This will be relevant later. They do not have wings like this. I told you there are a lot of great things about these wings. They are lacking the thumb. Uh, that's actually how I found out about this finger because at first I thought this wing just had one finger too few and a thumb that was considerably too long. But as I looked at bat wings, no, it's simply, simply lacking the thumb and, and this index finger is correct. So it's, it's missing the thumb. It's actually pretty important for bats in their form of locomotion, so bummer to this guy. And I, what is the deal with these independent nostrils? Uh, I mean, that it looks like a dinosaur skull with these independent nostrils. Bats just have one big sinus cavity like you do. And after closer examination, I think the body is actually a human skeleton. The pelvis is what really gave it away. Bats have very small pelvises that are elongate and shaped nothing like our weird pelvises that are big and wide and built for upright bipedal locomotion. But at least it has a pelvis because this next one does not. And that's the least of its problems. 
The spider was obviously flawed, but this bird is the one that really got me. At first glance, it looks okay. It is just that they messed up almost every skeletal feature that is unique to birds. The first thing that I noticed was that it doesn't have a keel on its sternum. It has a sternum, but it doesn't have a keel. Not all birds have a keel, but all flighted birds do, and this is clearly a flighted bird. The keel is a huge surface area on the sternum where the flight muscles attach that are used both to raise and depress the wing. Unlike humans and most vertebrates where the muscles to raise the forelimbs attach on the back. Anyway, a mistake, but forgivable. But then it really fell apart. What is with this tail? Birds, one of the very unique features of birds is that their, their tail vertebrae are fused into something called a pogo style. It is one of the defining characteristics of birds. They don't have a bone running into every single one of their tail feathers. It kind of looks right, it's totally wrong. And then the wings. Remember how I said the hand bones of birds are fused into just like one skinny piece? The wing is built up mostly of feathers. They certainly do not have this crazy bat wing of a thing going on here. And even if birds had bat wings, which they don't, the finger bones don't attach all the way down the forearm. This is horrible. This is horrible. But then I heard the second craziest thing I learned all day. Because this apparently is a snake skeleton. See, we called up a Halloween store in another city to ask if they had any reptile skeletons, like any lizards or snakes. And he informed us that they didn't have any lizard skeletons and that they don't make snake skeletons because snakes don't have skeletons. Leisha was talking to him over the speakers in our van. And when he said that, Leisha turned to look at me and I was just sitting there with my mouth and eyes wide open like, <laughs> Leisha immediately started laughing. I've never heard her laugh right in somebody's face like that. She just couldn't hold it in. When we got to the store, it was apparent that he hadn't Googled it since we called because he was sticking to his guns about snakes not having skeletons. Um, they do though. And the next place we went had one. Ta-da! So let's start with the pros. That this snake has a skeleton. Apparently that is not self-evident. The whole skeleton is a bit more robust than a real snake skeleton, but I appreciate that it has vertebrae and ribs running the length of the body. Though the ribs should stop probably right about here. Snakes have short tails and there are no ribs in the tail. The skeleton has no sternum, but neither do snakes, which allows them to expand very wide when they eat. The biggest problems are just with the skull. It's a mess. Snake skulls are very delicate and flexible. They have a kinetic skull. This skull is one of the most robust skulls I have ever seen. I mean, compare this skull to that of a gaboon viper. They're not similar. Like a gaboon viper, it has very long fangs. Gaboon vipers have the longest fangs of any snake. But unlike a gaboon viper, those fangs appear to be fixed in place. They don't swivel like those of vipers. Fixed fangs this long would protrude right through the bottom jaw. And while we're on the subject of the lower jaw, snakes have lower jaws that do not actually connect in the front. This is what allows snake jaws to open so wide that they can swallow shockingly large things. Their jaws do not unhinge, by the way. We actually have a whole video about this. All right, I won't leave you hanging any longer. I have something very important to show you. This cat. This cat I found at the Halloween store where snakes don't have skeletons. And in a lot of ways, it's just kind of weird and unnerving. Uh, it does have some stuff going for it. This is actually a fairly common pose for a cat to take if it's upset and trying to intimidate, say, another cat or you or a dog or something like that. Its legs are a little bit long. It almost looks like an AT-AT. And its feet are sort of rodent-like and bizarre. Um, but there's just one thing that really put it over the top for me, and that's this face. 
<laughs> and last but not least is this crazy little monkey. Actually, other than not having a zygomatic arch, which is the, the cheekbone here, it isn't really too bad at all. It isn't a museum replica or a perfect teaching aid, but it's honestly very good. I am particularly impressed by the construction of the feet, which have an independent thumb toe. And, and I mean, they've got all the metatarsals. It looks pretty darn good. And, and the free ribs down below. So they've got a sternum, but there are a few free ribs below that aren't fused into the sternum. These are very accurate. It's not perfect, but I think that it shows that a person could do a Google search for some pictures of an actual skeleton before making a model of one. And it's, it's fully posable. Why, thank you, Jack. Not you. We named the monkey Jack. As always, like and subscribe. What should I react to in the future? And we hope to see you real soon. I'd like to take just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who made this video possible. Thank you for supplying us with all of these amazing skeletons. You guys do so much to, to allow us to try new things and just bring you fun content like this. And, and as our way of saying thank you, of course, we've got a lot of awesome features. If you're interested in those features or just supporting what we do here at Clint's Reptiles, please consider checking out our Patreon. There's just one thing that really put it over the top for me. And that's this face. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> like, Alicia can hear me laughing all over the store. Oh, oh goodness. Oh my, I've been laughing all afternoon every time I think about it. <laughs> it's the best Halloween decoration of all time. <sighs> <laughs> See it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody put this together and went, yeah, it looks about right. <laughs> its feet are obviously what I think they do what freak me out the most. Yeah, there might they might be Yeti feet. I'm not. <laughs> They reminded me of the penguins, feet. Yeah, they're bad, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what these teeth are made out of. They might be made out of teeth. <laughs> but not from a cat. A little too real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wrong. That's all wrong. These eyes! <laughs> Who's like, do cats have circle eyes or, or, or elliptical eyes? And they went, I don't know. Do both. <laughs> Do both. Just, it's like a slit eye around, I don't know, kind of a combo. We'll split the difference. <laughs> it's the legs are not right either. The ATAT? -AT? They look unnerving, <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> I can picture a little snow speeder going around there. <laughs> yeah, that's quite. <laughs> 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 Same <thought. laughs>